Hi everyone, this is Folk Project Television, and I'm your host, Joe Guzzo. Have a really great show for you today. We have the guest star, Dave Vargo. He's going to spend some time talking with us, and we're going to hear some of his original music. So stay tuned because we're going to have a really great show. One thing I do want to caution you about. We had a little problem with the sound quality, so you might hear some background noises or echoes. Couldn't get rid of it, so we're just going to try to make do with the best as best we can. So, here we go. We're going to start the show right into the interviews. Thanks so much. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Dave Vargo. He's going to be uh, talking to us a bit today and giving us some of his music. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well. I, uh, I understand that uh, now that the voting is all done, thank God for that, we can get back to some semblance of normal and stop seeing all these ads on TV. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope. Yeah, right? So uh, the, the, we'll, yeah, see, the, we'll see how long it actually takes to count everything. Yeah, I know, right? Right. Um, I know that there, uh, even though the election is behind us, the pandemic isn't. And I know that it's hit everyone in different ways. How are you and uh, your family doing? Yeah, we're doing fine. You know, I think like you know, everybody else, there's adjustments to the new norm, <laughs> the new paradigm. And, uh, but you know, we're, we're healthy, I mean, which is the main thing. And oh, uh, yeah. we're working. Oh. Um, so uh, we don't have to worry about un losing jobs or unemployment or things like that. And uh, so overall, they look pretty good. Uh, and musically, things aren't as robust as they used to be. But mm -hmm. the uh, at your home, it, it's you and, and your wife, and you said your wife a and I and a uh, and an almost fourteen-year-old corgi. <laughs> She'll be fourteen on Saturday. The children in the family, yes. No, no, just just us three. Yeah. How you how are you guys doing with all this? Uh, we're we're hanging in there. Um, my wife and I are you know we it's just the two of us. We're you know my, my I have a daughter and grandkids, but they're out on their own and a um, little over an hour's drive from me. And of course, we haven't seen them since uh, oh gosh, I guess around the holidays, uh, Christmas or New Year, somewhere around there. Uh, so you know wow. we miss we miss them terribly, but we're doing what's right for both them and us. And um, it's better be safe. Yeah, yeah. And I, I understand that you do have a day job. Can you tell us about it? Sure. I'm a uh, certified financial planner. I own my own business. And um, it's kind of a boutique business. We deal with a limited number of clients. Um, but uh, in these interesting times with the gyrations of the investment markets, we've been very, <laughs> very busy trying to, uh, to manage the, our clients' expectations and their wealth. So. How, how about staying safe? Have you had any challenges being safe? No, knock on wood. Uh, no, it's been, it's been good. Um, you know, I go to work every day, but there's a, just a limited staff and everybody adheres to uh, proper safety etiquette. And, um, yeah, I guess, you know, having done some live shows this month, you, you notice some things that worry you a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, people still have that inclination to come up and want to shake your hand after you're set and <laughs> pat you on the back. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, no no, no scary calls yet. I mean, oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. I, I know I have a few pet peeves, and luckily I don't go out often enough to really – be affected by it. I go pick up my groceries. That's about it. And that's a, that's one of those, uh, I order stuff online and just go to the store and they put it in my trunk. So I really don't have any contact with anybody at this point. Right. So uh, how would you like to give us a song? Sure. All right. I, I, uh, I believe that the, I believe the first up was going to be um, a song without a fight. Out of fight, yes, it's the uh, what is it? Trap off my most recent record, which is not that recent anymore. It's a All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I know that you probably talked about it as part of the intro to the song, so why don't we just get right to it? Okay, great. 
No, this is Without a Fight. This was the uh, song that was the, the last one that I wrote for my most recent record, which is not that recent anymore. It's been out for over a year. Um, my wife and I had gotten away for a long weekend up in Lenox, Massachusetts, and uh, it's this time of year, so the World Series was on TV every night, and uh, it was the year that the Red Sox won, so being up in Massachusetts was somewhat appropriate. Um, the downside was that there was uh, no fast forward on um, the commercials. At home, I would typically watch a game on delay and fast forward through all the commercials, but there I couldn't do that, so it was kind of subject to all of uh, the politicalness that was going on, both local and national stuff, just the fighting and the nastiness and the mudslinging and things, and um, it's typically things that I would try and avoid paying attention to but couldn't there. So I think a lot of that um, fed into the lyrics that I was writing at the time. This is a Without a Fight. You know, I, I've, I've listened to this song, and uh, as with all your music, I found it very interesting. Um, you know, the way you get inspiration for everything has been uh, interest of interest to me. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll talk about it a little bit later on. But right now, I would like to talk to you about some of the big name acts with whom you've worked. Um, could you share us some tidbits about some of those uh, and how they happened? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I was um, lucky enough, often enough, to be in the right place <laughs> to uh, work with some some very talented people. Uh, Bonnet Shepherd being probably the first known name that I did some work with. Um, 
person that I spent the most time with was uh, Wendy Houston. Um, that was a longer period of time. And kind of interspersed with there, between the, the acts, I did work with a number of people, um, P.B. Snow being one of them, another prominent name. So I've been you know, very lucky to work with some very talented ladies. And so, you know, it all started with Bonnie. It was just, uh, she was from California. She was out there. She was unknown pretty Ooh. much at the time, except for local. Uh, and then she had a steady show. I forget the name of the bar. Um, and I went to the bar just not to see her, but to see her drummer, who I knew from college. And I struck up conversations. And I said, I'm in California. I, I can stay here if I get work. <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happened she was a guitar player and it kind of worked out and um, I really liked uh, her style what she was doing and um, kind of went from there and the most most of the time I was playing with her she was still just a struggling singer mm -hmm. she wrote songs but mostly she, she did cover you know R&B covers her own version of those songs but so um, you know the shows that we did and the minimal touring that we did was very you know low key um but that directly led to um, getting the work with Whitney Houston, which was now on um, about a highest scale as you could get. <laughs> I think the, the first live show I did with Whitney was at Madison Square Garden. So we went you know, from playing, if we were lucky, to 100 people or 200 people with Bonds into playing to you know, whatever Madison Square Garden, almost 10,000 people. Um, the big step up <laughs> in room size. I guess so. Uh, and pace, and pace. <laughs> Um, but it was fun. I mean, it was, you know, definitely more fun working with Vonda and Phoebe than working with Whitney, just from a musician standpoint. Right. Um, you know, Whitney's people were pretty um, demanding on keeping everything like the records. So pretty much when you did a show with her, you, it was very predictable. It was the same songs every night, the same order every night, the same way every night. And if you added any accent of your own, you got notes from the musical director saying, please don't do that. <laughs> um, so after, you know, a couple of weeks of that on a tour, it gets kind of, it's a little boring. It's almost like any other job, except you're in a different room, albeit a big room um, on a nightly basis. Um, but musically, it was. Well, you know, we all got into music for different reasons. Uh, I'm curious what, uh, what was it that got you involved and uh, how old were you when you started? I started officially playing guitar when I was eight. Uh, my mother tells me I started begging for lessons at around age five or so and nobody would take somebody that young at the time. Um, you know, I, and I don't know what started. I mean, my, my mother always had music playing in the house and most of the TV shows that we watched at that time were musical variety kind of shows. Mm -hmm just seeing that and I was always attracted to, to um, the guitar and, and also drums. I mean, I was always banging on things as a kid and I think my parents saw the guitar as a, as a lesser evil um, <laughs> than being a drummer. So we kind of pursued that and um, it's been in my life almost ever since. I, I've taken a couple breaks from it, but for the most part that's been attached to me um, on a daily basis for a long time. Now, I know you do a large number of songs. What's your favorite one to perform? Uh, you know, I, I think it really depends on the night and the audience. Um, you know, I think, you know, recently I've, I've enjoyed probably performing the new ones more just because they're new and you haven't played them that frequently. Um, but I do this um, virtual show on Tuesday nights. That's a, a live broadcast on, on Facebook. And um, we're now we're 30, we just had our 32nd episode. So we're doing it for 32 weeks in a row. So not quite since the beginning of the pandemic, but pretty close. And um, I started off by saying, I'm going to do two original songs every week. And I quickly ran out of songs because <laughs> with only two albums of material, it didn't last very long. So I started doing covers in there. But it brought me back to also playing some of the songs off the first record, which I haven't touched in you know probably years. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes even the old songs, just to go back to a new, kind of brings them up in your list again as far as what you like to play. And, and, and you also end up playing a little bit different, which is kind of nice. 
Now, I, I, I'm going to ask you for a, another song, and I believe um, you gave us a, a copy of um, Empty Space for your second. Uh... Yes, that's correct. Yeah. All right. So well, why don't we give it, I believe you gave an intro on that uh, video as well. So why don't we let that go now? All right. Sounds good. Thanks. So uh, I'm getting ready to go back into the studio to work on album number three. So I've been writing some songs and uh, I got about half uh, the record written at this point. We're going to start recording in a couple weeks. Um, the next I'm going to do is one of the newer ones. It's called uh, Empty Space. And uh, I guess, you know, I started writing this song from um, trying to, to deal with grief and um, grief that I've seen other people experience. For, um, I don't, I don't want to say anything much more than that, probably. Um, but hopefully the song speaks for itself. Getting day. Well, past midnight, been stumbling around this house. Blood dry, no way to fix it. Wishing I was somewhere else right now. Too much, it all is different. Working hard to forget my name. Last call, nowhere to hide. Staying here can only fan those flames. I know I'll be the same. Yes, I And the hits just keep on coming. 
<laughs> uh, here's a bit of fantasy for you. If you had an opportunity to work with anyone, any art musician at all, living or dead, anywhere in time from way back when to, you know, you know, Aristotle's uh, flute player, right through to anybody that's out there today. Um, who would you like to, uh, to have alongside you and play with? You know, I, I mean, there's a number of people on that list. I think at the top of the list would probably have to be Paul McCartney. Um, so um, it's just, I mean, it's just well, obviously iconic songwriter. Um, been doing it and doing it well for so long. Um, and it's, you know, can you go through a day and not hear a Beatles song someplace or a Paul McCartney song someplace? I, you know. So yeah, I, and, I've, and I've heard such great things about him from people that I know that have met him. Mm -hmm. um, unlike a lot of other <laughs> people that might be on my list. Um, um, so I think it would be great just to sit down and shoot the shit with them and, uh, and then, you know, make some music. I think that would be excellent also. I, uh, I know he'd be at least the number one or two on my list as well. Uh, I, might, I might push Paul Simon to number one, but he would definitely, uh, Paul uh, McCartney would definitely know. What did I? I'm in love with Paul's. That's what it is. <laughs> um, are you a fan of TV? Do you have any special shows that you uh, really love to watch, or you kind of that you know the boob tube is just not a bit? No, I am a, a big TV person. Um, not a number of hours, but it's something that I almost have to do nightly just to kind of get my mind to decompress and you know, get it out of where it is so that I can go to sleep. Um, and I watch mostly, I don't, can't remember the last time I've watched a show on just regular TV. It's just mostly cable shows, HBO, Showtime kind of things. Um, I'm just a big fan of Shameless, which now is no longer. I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, most of the shows that I like the best are going off or, or now off the air. <laughs> so I have to find a new list of, of shows. But yeah, it's a big fan of Game of Thrones and, you know, all those big HBO productions and stuff. Like right, that. right, right. Um, how about yourself? Uh, we're, my, my wife and I have gone to the dark side. We've, <laughs> we're watching a lot of uh, stuff from other parts of the world. We're watching uh, television that comes to us from uh, New uh, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, we're watching a lot of Acorn TV and BritBox. So okay. uh, yeah, we, we, we like a lot of that. And of course, we have favorite shows that are, you know, made right here in homegrown. Uh, but more often than not, we'll tend to, to watch shows we've never seen before. And with all the stuff that's out there right now and the limitations that currently exist in uh, getting new shows out, I figured the old shows that come from other countries are, you know, they're fresh and new for us. So it makes a lot of fun. Nice, nice. I have not checked those out yet. I have fun. But I'm, I'm starting to run low, as you said, without new shows coming out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> looking for other avenues to pursue. So. And uh, I know that people love to give advice. Um, it seems like you can't uh, avoid it. People just have to tell you what they think. And uh, I know it's not all advice is good, but what do you think the best advice you've ever gotten might be? You know, it's it's a it's an easy answer, and when you hear the answer, you're gonna be like, it's, it's the most obvious answer in the world, probably. <laughs> I, I went to school for music, and one of my first um, professors, um, who had been a traveling road musician before he came in to teach, um, was you know always be prepared and always be professional. He says that you can't wait until you get the gig to hone up on your skills. Your skills have to be honed up prior. Uh, if you're in the right place at the right time and you don't have your skill set, you're, you're really not in the right place because you're not going to get the gig. And then once you get it, you know, be easy to work with, be there mm -hmm. early, stay late and work hard. And it all sounds obvious, but you know, I booked a lot of shows locally and I wish to say that everybody did that. <laughs> you know, so many times we have an eight o'clock show and it's, you know, five of eight and the talent's not there yet. There's been no sound check. And, you know, and it's like, you know, this is not how you get ahead in this business. Definitely not a good thing. That's for sure. 
And um, that was you know, partially secret to my success. I mean, I was willing to do those simple, seemed like obvious things that a lot of other people just didn't and didn't think about it. Yeah, I think when I when I was in the business world, I worked for um, a number of large companies, and it would drive me crazy if someone would set up a meeting, and then that person who set up the meeting would be late. It drove me nuts. It absolutely drove me nuts. And, you know, they were the star of the show in that case. And it basically falls into the same category as what you just said. So how'd you like to give us another song? Sure. If, if, you, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to give it to you. And, um, well, I think we should have known by now, huh? Yes. <laughs> we're going to listen to a song with that title, folks. Here we go. I'm going to do a, another new one. This will be uh, also on the upcoming record once we, we get to it. It's called Should Have Known By Now. I uh, don't have any good stories <laughs> or any bag line about this song. Um, as always, the, uh, the chords and the melody came first, the words came second, and uh, there was no theme or anything I was trying to write about particularly. We just kind of came together over time, and that, which happens pretty frequently for me um, and oftentimes I won't know what the song's about until much after the fact and we're not far enough after the fact yet for me to truly know <laughs> about this one maybe you guys can tell me <clears throat>
another great story. Thanks so much, Dave. I uh, you. I do have uh, I do want to bring up a little bit about yourself now. I'd like you to talk about yourself uh, rather than the music and um, your. Let's look at your creative process. When you come up with new music, is it words first, music first, both at the same time, uh, a little bit of each? It is, I would say 99.5% of the time, it's the music first. Um, and the words are something that I definitely uh, struggle with. Um, you know, I just, I'm just finishing a song now that I wrote the music. The words, I'm sorry, that's that's Bella here in the background. That's great. Everybody gets to have a voice. Guys. Everybody gets to have a voice. <laughs> Daddy's working. Um, the uh, I, I had the uh, the melody and the chords for um, over two months, and I'm just finishing up the lyrics as, as we speak. So <clears throat> that one took a long time. And sometimes it just takes a long time once you have that to, for me to, to pull the words out. Um, I think I, I wrote one song with the lyrics first. Everything else has been um, music first. So much so that, you know, I, I during this pan pandemic and being, you know, <laughs> not being out to do live shows, you find other avenues and you try and find. And I was able to do music for a couple of um, commercials for people's websites and for ads and things. And it was just, you know, essentially background music. And I, I watched their video. Mm -hmm. I had music written within 20 minutes. Um, I sussed it out. The next day I recorded it. And the day after they had it. And without lyrics, I could copy songs <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, music comes pretty, pretty easily. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much the opposite. I do my lyrics first. And then I fight to find the tune that really brings it to life. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with everything that's happening, um, no, wait a minute. You know what? Are you working on anything new right at this moment? Yeah, I have. Um, I just booked studio time and uh, it's going to start two weeks from tonight. Um, start working on the next record. So I have um, soon to be seven songs that are written and um, I'll write another three or four. But uh, I was hoping to get music out this um, this year, which is not going to happen now, mm -hmm. but I hope I have a single out, a single out the beginning of this year, and then sometime next year, the rest of the record. Now, with everything that's going on out there right now in the country, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter and all the racial unrest, and with the uh, political situation, as the craziness that we have, and the you know the partisanship and all the other nutty things, uh, the environment. And, global warming and things of that nature. Uh, are you including any songs with that type of social commentary? Or are you kind of staying away from that rather than burning that uh, that bridge before you? Yeah, you know what? I haven't purposely written anything. I, I didn't go out and set out to do it, but I find that um, a couple of songs off the last record and um, a couple of songs on this record, it's creeping into the lyrics. Um, more so the um, social unrest, political fighting kind of things, I think. Um, right. Dispersion between people, I think, is what I'm picking up on more so than anything. Um, and once it's not on purpose, it's just kind of it's setting in. Mm -hmm. And um, here's a here's a fun question. What's your most useless talent? Oh. Jeez, you know, <laughs> the worst part is I knew you were going to ask me that question and I still don't have an answer for it. <laughs> uh, geez. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, you I know wish what? I had a witty, great... <laughs> well, I'll make it easy on you. Instead of giving me an answer, why don't you give us one last song? That sounds like a deal. <laughs> and uh, I believe you have a song called Battle Burns? Yes. Yep. That's a uh, song off of the most recent record. All right. Well, let's listen to that. And we'll, uh, I'm sure our, our uh, listeners will be very, very pleased to get some more music in. 
So uh, for my last song, I'm going to do um, one of the two singles that was released off my, my last record. <clears throat> it's called Battle Burns. Um, again, <laughs> not a real good story behind this song. Um, and I had the term uh, Battle Burns written down for a while. just was there kind of lingering about and it found its way into this song. And um, it's turned into one of my more popular songs. You know, the, the one good thing about um, Spotify is that it's real easy to see um, what songs people like more than others because they you, can, you have numbers as numerical measurement. And I think this is my third most popular um, downloaded or viewed or played song. So anyway, Battle Burns. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the show today. Dave, thanks so much for being on it with us. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the uh, stories you told us and certainly appreciate the music. Great music. I appreciate that. And uh, hopefully we'll get to Thank see you, so you on the Hopefully we'll get to see you on the road. 
I hope so. But this was great. This was so much fun. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to give uh, with your website information to our viewers so that they can uh, find you online. And hopefully when we start getting schedules in, you get things posted there and people can follow you. Great. Fantastic. You have a wonderful day and we'll talk again. Let's hope so. Hopefully in person next time. That would be nice. Thanks, Dave. So that's it for today's show. However, I hope you enjoyed everything you heard. I hope you enjoyed the music as well as the interview itself. Dave, thanks once again for being on the show. We really appreciate your time and I certainly appreciate the music. And I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing you out there in the real world at some point in the near future, hopefully. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that. And uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing your new album as it comes out. Until then, however, everybody, not just Dave, stay safe. We still have a pandemic going on. Maintain social distancing. Wash your hands as often as possible. And wear a mask whenever you go outside. Everything will be all right. Take a deep breath and be calm. And we'll see you on the other side of this mess. Until then, just remember to listen to plenty of music. Enjoy yourself. And as I always say, please keep peace in your heart. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.